is Christopher Nolan's next movie going to be a Blue Thunder remake? Maybe. Welcome to Sidetrack Daily, your daily dose of sci-fi TV, movie, news and rumours. So, it was actually announced a couple of weeks ago now that actually Matt Damon and Tom Holland have been signed on to be in Christopher Nolan's next movie. We then started to get some rumours and actually a couple of people that speak to us over here at Sidetrack have kind of confirmed it that the, the rumour is that Christopher Nolan's next movie is actually going to be something inspired by Blue Thunder, the original movie back in the 80s with Roy Schneider. Now, apparently, according to somebody I got to speak to, Christopher Nolan is actually a big fan of Blue Thunder and this is genuinely something he has looked at. Again, the rumour being that it wouldn't exactly be a remake because Christopher Nolan doesn't do that kind of thing, but it would be a new story written by him, directed by him, inspired by that original movie. Now, I actually think politically and sort of in the way our society has moved on, this has got interesting connotations. But again, what I'm being told is the movie actually won't be set in present day America. It will actually be set either in the future or slightly in the past. Now, I think that also has very interesting connotations because does it mean this is going to be sort of a dystopian future in LA, war-torn, you know, think something maybe like Predator 2 or something? You know, maybe a slightly exaggerated vision of what L.A. was going to be like. Demolition Man, maybe. Something like that. Or is it actually going to be set in the 80s and maybe a slight reimagining of what it was like back in the 80s and what would have happened or what would have been different if something like a Blue Thunder helicopter, remember, a military helicopter was used by the police. Now, we don't know which way Christopher Nolan is going with that. But we have got to the point of casting. So there must be a script somewhere and we're just going to have to wait and see. Christopher Nolan is traditionally quite secretive about lots of his projects. Remembering Dunkirk didn't get announced till quite late, actually, in the early pre-production. Tenet was something that was kept very under wraps and so is Inception. So is this something I'm excited about? Not really. I'm not a big fan of Christopher Nolan. I, I can't help it. Look, even the Batman movies, which were obviously great, steadily got less great as they went on. And by the third Batman movie, I'm like, this is really long. And that is one of my problems with Christopher Nolan. The way he directs and the way that his movies are then edited, which he again, he also has a lot of control over, is quite laboured. And I find it a little bit difficult to watch. I love Dunkirk and I love the story of Dunkirk, but I have to admit I would never watch it again. I hated Tenet. I really didn't like it. I actually thought in places it didn't really make sense, even though I'm sure if you probably like watched it lots of times and really focused on it, it probably did. But I think it's one of those movies that the idea was like really like, oh my God, I'm going to go forwards and backwards over there. But then the actual like doing it was just confusing and visually quite confusing at times and again i'm not sure it made was actually logical in places you've got films like inception though again really good for most of it but then at the end they just sort of went ah we'll get a bit blurry on the rules here because it's getting a bit long-winded and we've forgotten what some of them were don't even start me on interstellar don't start me if you're a regular side tracker you'll know exactly what i think of that movie and i'm not a massive fan but Christopher Nolan has done movies that I do enjoy and he has done bits of films that I enjoy. So if he was to do something that was a little bit more action, a little more quicker paced, um, maybe didn't rely so much on being like ultra realistic, let the imagination flow a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking, you know, like a Transformers movie or anything where they just like go, you know, that actor would definitely have died if that had happened. Or, you know, I don't want them to go, to completely have lose the chain of thought, but, you know, a little bit quicker paced, then I think actually this could be something that's really exciting. Now, the Blue Thunder as a remake is going to be produced by Universal. 
And this is something that we've actually been talking about in this channel for quite a while, because there was a plan for Universal, it was going to go on the Peacock Network, apparently, about two years ago for a Blue Thunder TV series. Now, this was back when the streaming wars were still um, fully on the go, and they were just desperately looking for anything to turn into a new streaming series. Universal owned Blue Thunder and they had this opportunity and they actually did pitch it out and they did go into early, very, very early pre-production. Then the strikes happened. The streaming services realised that we've all lost this and we need to maybe not just produce anything. And that, I'm being told, is what's given Christopher Nolan the opportunity to now do something completely different with this project. So, a Blue Thunder reimagined a older helicopter pilot and his new younger protege. You can't really argue with Tom Holland being cast in that role because the man is only 12 years old and he's still 12 years old, even 10 years after the first Spider-Man movie. So I actually really think the casting is very interesting. I love Matt Damon in 90% of what he does. So again, I don't have a problem with that either. I just really hope that we get the best out of Christopher Nolan and that he actually does something that's not just clever, thought-inspiring, you know, dramatically interesting, but actually entertaining as well. But hey, that's only my opinion. Get into the comments and tell me what you think. What do you think of Christopher Nolan's movies as a whole? Interstellar is regularly voted as one of the most realistic and most exciting sci-fi movies ever made. I personally go, it's not bloody realistic. The robots are square and somehow walk without falling over. They cock up some of the gravitational stuff because actually you wouldn't be able to get, them, get that close to a black hole and have that distortional effect. It's not, again, accurate. And the whole thing at the end, even though it's technically accurate about quantum mechanics and appearing through the bloody bookcase, isn't physically accurate so uh, stupid film anyway but that's my opinion get into the comments and tell me what your opinion is is this something that you think christopher nolan could actually smash out of the park or is it going to be another tenet which i think universally everybody hates right get into the comments and tell me exactly what you think if you are new to the channel we're going to be doing these videos daily mostly, um, with news and opinion on new sci-fi projects, TV, movie, entertainment, etc. So please subscribe if you want to see more. As always, please stay safe and I'll catch you next time.